If you take your copy of Scripture and turn to the book of 1 Corinthians. And we're going to kind of talk today about why we do communion and who should do communion. And I just want to say this, and I know I say it every time, but I, I so love the opportunity that we get to come together as a church family and celebrate communion. Uh, the, the, the thing that we get to celebrate today is God's love, God's hope, God's joy, and God's peace that are only found in Christ. And I'll just kind of go ahead and put it out there for you. The only hope that we have to see any unity, the only hope that we have to see any, any love, the only hope that we have to see any transformation in our life and in the church is what we're going to do today. And so we're going to have to ask, answer the question, why? Why do we do communion? A lot of people say, well, that's just what the church does. It's part of what we do. But why? Well, look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and Paul's going to give us this answer in the leadership of the Holy Spirit of why we do communion. Look at verse 23. Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So why? Why do we do the Lord's Supper? We do it to remember Jesus. We do it to remember who he is. We do it to remember what he's done. And we do to remember that it is the only hope that we have. I love this, and, and I always like to say this, you know, the, the table's been set. This, this is the beauty of communion. The table has been set. Everything has been provided. This is not a potluck. We don't add anything to it. We need to remember that. We need to stop and focus on just a second that God has provided everything that we need to be saved. And if you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me just encourage you. God has provided everything that you need to be right with him. The body of Christ, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of the sinless and perfect life that Jesus led while he was on this earth, not because he needed to be perfect, but because we're not perfect. And so Jesus lived a perfect life. He did everything that God wanted him to do, not for himself, but for me and for you. And Christ offered that perfection on the cross. And then we have the juice, which represents the blood of Jesus. And we have these songs that talk about the blood of, the Je of, blood of Jesus. And I, my favorite is this, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you've never received that today, this is what we are to remember. The only hope we have is the body and blood of Jesus. We need to remember that we all come to Jesus in the same way. This is one of the things that I love about communion. When we all take this in just a few minutes, it is a reminder that we are all sinners who are saved by grace. There is no one better than anyone else. How do we become part of God's family? It's all the same way. We all got on our face before God at some point in time and said, I am a sinner. God, I need you to save me. I did Every other person in here did. Maybe you've never done that, but you can do that in just a few moments. We need to remember that. But we also need to remember every time that we take the Lord's Supper, it's a promise. And you know what that promise is? That he's coming again. He left us this promise that every time that we gather together and we take the body and the blood, it's a, a, a representation, it's a symbol of it. But every time we take it, we are to remember that Jesus is not dead, he's alive. And he's coming again. That's the why. We do this to remind us that we need Jesus. We do this to remind us that there's no hope other than what's found in Christ. We do this to remind us that we are all sinners saved by grace. So the second question is who? Who can take communion? Growing up, I really didn't understand communion. I've told you this before. I, I thought that to take communion, you had to be perfect. 
to take communion that, you know, everything in your life had to be going really, really well because otherwise you should, you should not take it because it's a scary thing if your life isn't right and you take communion. And so there was a lot of times when I would just say no and I, I would let the plate pass me by because my life didn't line up with what I thought the standard was. So who can take communion? Well, let's look back in the scripture, verse 27 and 28. Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Kind of seems like that's a contradiction, doesn't it? Don't eat it if you're unworthy, but then you need to look at yourself and eat it. Well, what does that mean? Here's what it means. The who that can take communion is anybody who wants Jesus to change their life. Please hear this today. Please hear this today. Communion is not about you getting your life right and then coming forward. Communion is remembering that none of us have our life right and this is the answer. Is your life broken? Come and take of the body and blood of Christ who can transform your life and make it new. Are you fearful and doubting and hurting? Partake of the body and blood of Jesus who can heal your hurts and, and give you assurance of faith and move in your heart and take away doubt. Does your life just seem completely scattered and destroyed? Take the body and blood of Jesus who makes all things new. There's only one reason you should not participate in communion today. And that's if you don't want Jesus to change your life. Because it's meaningless. If you don't believe Jesus is who he said he is and did what he said he did, and you want him to do something in your life, don't take it. But here's the hope. You've, if you believe Jesus is who he said he is and did what he said he did, and you believe that he has the power to change your life, Partake in communion because that means you're saying, I trust you to do what only you can do. Remember the table's been set. See, Jesus doesn't say, get your act together and come here. Here's what he says. The table is set and I will get your act together. Everything you're looking for is found in relationship to Jesus. Here's the question. What are you gonna do about it? See, this isn't a ritual, this isn't a tradition, this isn't just something that we do. This is a powerful reminder of who Christ is and a powerful reminder that he wants to change your life. In just a second, I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to respond. We, we wanna have a time where we can just respond to what Christ is saying to us and let him work in our heart so we can celebrate that by taking communion. So if you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus into your heart, maybe today's the day you need to do that. And what better way to celebrate the new birth than getting to celebrate it by taking the Lord's Supper? How awesome would that be? Christ saved me today. It's by this body and this blood that he saved me and I celebrate that by taking communion. Maybe you're here today and you've just been broken and hurting and you've been carrying your junk around. Maybe today's the day you let all that go and you celebrate your freedom. You celebrate your hope. You celebrate your peace by taking the body and blood of Jesus and say, this is the only place that that's found. And I celebrate that. Jesus is here. He's calling. It's time for you to say yes. I'm gonna pray. The instrumentalists are gonna come and we're gonna have a time where you can respond. So many Sundays, I feel like we're such in such a hurry to get everything done to get out of here. We have places to go. We have things to do. And if I, if I get up and go down front, everybody's gonna look at me and they're gonna think, hey, hurry it up, we gotta go home. But we've got time today. You have time today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to celebrate what communion is all about that Christ has given you everything that you need to be right with him. It's just your time to say yes. 
Let's pray. Father, we come before you and we thank you for this gift, the wonderful, gracious, loving, and powerful gift of your son. And I, I pray for myself and I pray for my brothers and sisters that are here today, that today would be the day that we would hear you loudly and clearly speaking to our heart. That we'd hear our loving father say, all who are weary, all who are carrying heavy burdens, all who are broken and alone, come to me. Come to me. I'll forgive your sin. I'll take your load. I'll give you hope and peace for your soul. May we hear you calling and respond. We would say yes and experience the joy of celebrating an intimate personal relationship with you in communion. Father, help us to respond to you now. In Jesus' name, amen.